Jesus Christ is the only one that has the sole responsibility of delivering a person. It is his sole responsibility. No human being can do that. If not, God wouldn't have sent him. Have you thought of that? Why would God send Jesus? If man could do that, he would have probably asked prophet Elijah to deliver man. You know, he was very prayerful. Or he would have asked John the Baptist to deliver man. You know, John the Baptist's head was cut off. But it was still not enough to deliver man. Because the question is not, did he die? The question should be, who died? Did he commit any sin? <laughs> That's why the Bible says that there's only one name under the heaven by which man can be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. Benefit, which is the last benefit I'll be revealing today, is that the ultimate marriage has removed the stress of revenge from our hands. In other words, we no longer need to revenge again. Vengeance is now the responsibility of God. So you don't need to stress yourself trying to pay back one evil. So somebody does everything to you, you forget about the person and move on. There's someone else who has the responsibility of vengeance. You don't stress yourself. Only witches revenge themselves because they don't have God as their father. But God is our father. It is his duty to revenge and fight on our behalf. Romans 12:19. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Jali beloved, avenge not yourself. He said, he didn't say avenge, he said, don't avenge yourself. That means it's not your right, it's not your duty. He said, but give place unto wrath. Wrath means the wrath of God. In other words, when you avenge, you are no longer giving room for wrath. You are no longer giving place to wrath. But when you don't avenge, you are giving place for the wrath of God to avenge for you. In other words, anytime you avenge, God will withdraw. And anytime you don't avenge, God avenges on your behalf. That's what this scripture means. He said, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. The ultimate marriage gave us this on a platter of gold. So now, we no longer need to revenge. Now, we are under a commandment to forgive everyone. No matter what anyone does to you, you must forgive. You must not pray back to sender to a person. Anyone that prays back to sender against another person automatically loses the benefits of the ultimate marriage. that anyone that prays against his enemies is not a child of God. Do I show it to you in the Bible? It, everything is in the Bible. Matthew chapter 5. Let's start from verse number 43. And I love Jesus Christ. Anything, he did not change all the laws of Moses. He only changed the ones that had to do with retaliation. All the retaliatory laws of Moses. And before changing anyone, he will tell you what it used to be, before telling you what he wants it to be. In verse 43, the Bible says, you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love your neighbor and hate your enemies. So that was the law of Moses. Law of Moses supported people to love their neighbor, but their enemies killed their enemies very well. That's why King David prayed so many prayers against enemies in the book of Psalms. This is where Jesus changed it. That's why the Bible says, suffer not the wish to live. This is where Jesus changed it. And Jesus said, 
you have heard that it has been said, that shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. He changed it here. Who are your enemies? Let me remind you who your enemies are. That man that does not want you to be alive. That person that is planning evil against you. That person that does not want you to marry. That person that does not want you to have a child. These are your enemies. Jesus Christ said, love them. Listen to me. It is a commandment. It is not an advice. It is not a suggestion. You are not a Christian because you fast and pray. Everybody fast, everybody pray. Christians are those that love their enemies. It can define Christ Christianity as a religion where the members love their enemies. He said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, where ye love one another. He said, bless those that curse you. What does that mean? When somebody is cursing you, you will die, God will punish you, God will deal with you. You are busy saying, God will bless you. It is where we feel. Listen to me. God has sent me to you to remove struggle from your life. Do you know that the mouth cannot be used for cursing and blessing at the same time? Any mouth that has the capacity of cursing cannot bless. In the book of James, Apostle James said that a, a fountain cannot produce spring water and salt water at the same time. It's either producing salt water or produces spring water. So he said the same mouth you use in blessing God, that's what you use in cursing. How can it work? If you don't have who to bless, you can bless yourself. But if you want your mouth to bless successfully, then never use it to curse anyone. Use it to bless God. If you don't have anybody to bless, bless yourself. Those of you who are men of God, women of God, don't curse. So that when you pray for people, your prayer will happen in their lives. When you, when you always bless it, your mouth will gather capacity and power to bless. So when you say to somebody, God bless you, the person will come back with a testimony. Because you have blessed the person. The Bible says, do good to them that hate you. What a powerful scripture. You have five people in your company, and four love you so much, but one hates you. He said, that one that hates you, you should start doing good things to that person that hates you. You are coming back today, for instance. You see something uh, on the road, you buy for her. He said to her, Mama, Ade, I bought something for you. Will you like it? She will be shocked because she doesn't like you. She'll be angry. She will take it and put it in the dustbin. Tomorrow again, you're coming back. Mommy, I, did. I saw this thing. I got it for you. Will you like it? She will collect it again. Now, two things will happen. Either she starts liking you, or she will start running away from you. <laughs> if you are coming back the third day, once she knows you come back at 5 p.m., she will enter the room and lock the room. Because she will be scared. She doesn't know what you're up to. This is the behavior of Christians. I'm using the Bible. I did not write the Bible. And you can't put away what Jesus Christ said that you say you're a Christian. A Christian means a follower of Christ. This is what Christ wants. It now tells us the reason why we should do all this. He said, so that you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. In other words, when you, what will you do to be a child of God in heaven? When you do what? When you love your enemy, bless those that curse you, pray for those that despise you, use you, and you will be what? A child of God. In other words, anyone who prays against his enemy is what? It's not a child of God. The person has no relationship with our father. Our father does not want anyone to die. Don't you understand? Can you tell me why Jesus Christ came? To set with, to redeem with people? Sinners. To redeem sinners. And some people want to kill the sinners that make Christ die. You think he will be happy? He does not want them to die. He died so that they will be set free. He can only pray for them and teach them. Don't kill them. If somebody killed you 
before he repented, he wouldn't be alive today to look for who you are killing. You want to kill. Are you getting this? If someone had killed you, someone had prayed back to Sena and killed you before you repented, you wouldn't see anyone to pray against them. You see those sinners, Jesus loves them too much. Too much. He must love them too. That's what we do in Christianity. Let me teach you something very important. When you don't pray against your enemies, it does not mean your enemy will kill you. Rather, it gives you an upper hand against your enemy. We, we fight with peace. Don't you understand? Love is stronger than evil. We don't fight. Evil cannot overcome evil. You can only overcome evil with love. Now, let me tell you this. Everybody, give me your ears. This world is very organized. No spiritual attack can take place on earth if it has not been approved in the heavens. If it is not approved, it cannot happen. If God says you are not going to die, nobody can scratch you. Even if everybody on earth teams up against you, they cannot touch you because it has not been approved. And for any spiritual attack to be approved, there must be a reason. If there is no reason, it cannot be approved. Nobody has the right to see you passing on the street and say, let me attack this person. It doesn't work that way. If I have not done any evil to a person, nobody can harm you. You know what the Bible says? A causeless cause cannot stand. A cause without a reason cannot take place. In other words, before a cause can take place, there must be a reason. Before the devil or witches can attack a person, there must be a reason. That reason is when a person contravenes the gospel of peace. What is the gospel of peace? The Bible says, live at peace with all men as much as it depends on you. In other words, if you try reconciling and the person says no, it's no longer your problem. So once you have a problem with somebody, reconcile. That's what it means. Harmonize. Say to the person, I'm sorry. Whether you are at fault or not. In Christianity, we don't look at who is at fault. We reconcile with all men as much as it depends on you. If you try to reconcile and the person says no, it's no longer dependent on you. Are you getting this now? So anyone that practices this gospel of peace cannot be attacked, whether the person is prayerful or not. And on the other hand, anyone who contravenes the gospel of peace can be attacked, whether the person is prayerful or not. I give you an illustration. If a woman has a house sep and the house sep is a witch, okay, this is an assumption, okay? And because the house sep is a witch, does not mean the house sep will wake up one morning and decide to attack the mistress. It does not work that way. Everything is organized. As long as the mistress has not contravened the gospel of peace, she cannot be attacked. So if the house sep goes to witchcraft meeting, and they decide to attack her mistress, they will first send her on assignment to manipulate her mistress to contravene the gospel of peace. I get it, this time. So the house step goes into the kitchen, picks up some fine, beautiful, breakable plates the mistress loves so much, and deliberately breaks them. So the moment the plates are broken, the mistress rushes her and starts hitting her. You witch, you have broken my plate with your witches. You are a witch, I will kill you today, I will deal with you. The moment she is doing that, she has contravened the gospel of peace. And at that instant, she may be attacked. Whether she is prayerful or not. It's not prayer that protects. You need to behave well first before you talk of prayer. <laughs> but if after breaking the plate, that the mistress goes to her and instead of beating her, gives her love and says to her, my daughter, 
Don't worry, the plates are already broken. Just make sure none of the broken pieces would hurt you. What has she done to the witch? She has hit her below the bed. If they don't sack her from the witchcraft court, they will demote her because she failed in her assignment. Anytime you love a wicked person, you have finished the person. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that when you love your enemy, you have heaped coals of burning fire on his head. No one can survive burning fire in 24 hours. Rather than pray against your enemy, start loving them. Start praying for them. And you, in doing that, you give room for God to fight on your behalf. Are you not tired? Some people are, are fighting battles. Battles are not fought in Christianity. We don't fight battles because Christ has already won the battle for us. What we do is called spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare does not have the same meaning as fighting of battle. You get my book, Spiritual Warfare, and understand the difference. And prayer is not used in spiritual warfare. That's why some people who don't know how to pray still excel in life. And some people who pray very well are, are given money by people who don't know how to pray. <laughs> have you noticed it? I'm not saying that prayer is not good. We'll be praying very well today, but if you pray without the right knowledge, it does not produce results. It leads to destruction. 